Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Hockey Writers Roundtable Season Previews. We are up to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I am joined in by Jim Bay, who you've seen many times on these shows. He's been on playoff previews, season previews. Uh, welcome to the show, Jim. Thank you. It's uh, good to be here and, uh, you know, really looking forward to uh, getting back to, you know, some hockey. It's been a long off season. <laughs> Longer for the Tampa Bay Lightning, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, very unexpectedly long, but needed. Yes, yeah, definitely needed, especially for Andre Vasilevsky, who's played a ton of hockey. Uh, well, not just him; all the all the yeah. players in the Lightning have have played a lot in the last few seasons. So I'm sure they welcomed the break, but I'm sure they didn't like it. Yeah. I mean, you know, being eliminated from playoffs is never never good. But uh, you know, they're going to a new season. Lots of different changes throughout the lineup. Like it seems to be every off season, they lose at least one big piece on Andre Pilat last off season, losing Alex Kalorn, another long time lightning this season. Uh, also Ross Colton getting traded to the Colorado avalanche. And he's been part of the team the last couple seasons. So, you know, lots of changes. So let's get going into that forward group, which sees a few additions. And like we said, some, some uh, losses, First of all, how big is it that losing Alex Kalorn, who's, I mean, arguably one of the bigger players over the last bunch of seasons he's been with the Lightning his whole career, now in yeah. Anaheim. Um, is there someone that's going to replace him? I mean, I'm sure no one can, but uh, how are they going to try? Well, if they're, they're going to try, there's going to have to be some players that um, underperformed last year that are going to have to step up a little bit um, like Nick Paul, who, you know, signed a, a contract, nice contract um, the season before coming off, a, you know, especially a good postseason. didn't really have the, the, you know, the season, you know, I think everybody thought he would or that he really is capable of um, the new trade of, or the trade last year at the deadline to get Tanner Janot, um, didn't pay dividends right away. He did have a little bit of an injury, but, you know, he's going to have to step up, you know, his play. Cooper had said that, you know, kind of the biggest loss for Kalorn and, and even Colton and some of the other guys that they lost, a lot of veterans like, you know, Corey Perry and stuff is leadership. Um, that's that's going to be part of the thing, you know, that's difficult. The talent that they brought in, you know, eh, with Kalorn and Colton, it's not there. But for some of the other players, they lost it. It might even be a little bit of an upgrade. So if, you know, they can, you know, bring, you know, get that locker room gelling quick, uh, I think that'll be the real key to, you know, whether or not uh, they have a successful season. For sure. They did add a few pieces uh, up front. They added Connor Sherry and free agency, uh, Josh Archibald, Logan Brown, I. Uh, you know, Luke Glenn, Glenn Denning is now is here too. So I mean, basically your whole like bottom six is going to be pretty different. So right. um, any of these players who kind of want to highlight to that could actually be big parts of it. I mean, it seems like the Lightning are able to bring in guys that become big pieces of the team and you don't yeah. expect it um, coming in free agency. Well, it's, it's nice that they had, you know, that, you know, there's some pretty solid veterans in in this group of four. Um, you know, Connor Sherry has uh, the playoff experience and, you know, a couple Stanley Cup rings with the Penguins to his name. Um, you know, I, I think that kind of the key to all of this and them is, is, a, is a guy they traded for last year. And it struck me as very interesting that right after the season when free agency started, the Lightning went out and re-signed Mikey Esamont right away. Um, he's, you know, kind of a under the radar kind of guy, fourth line, but what he clearly did last season is bring a lot of needed energy to the lineup that was, you know, kind of lacking some, you know, due maybe to a little bit of age, maybe to being really tired, but, you know, especially at the end of the season, um, you know, he, he just really stepped up, you know, he doesn't do a lot. He doesn't score a lot. A lot of goals. He doesn't get lots, but he's all over the ice. Mm -hmm. He's he's trying to wreak havoc wherever he goes, and um, I, I think the Lightning think that you know a player like that is, is going to help them. Um, you know, kind of it's like Brandon Hagel light. Uh, you know that that energy that 
you know, may not, you know, that, that was lacking a little bit last year for a couple of reasons to get that spark back in there, especially on the bottom six. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be interesting to see all these uh, new pieces fit into the lineup because they still got their big guys. I mean, Braden Point, Steven Stamkos, Kucherov, Hagel signed that, just signed that big extension. I'd keep him in Tampa Bay for a long time. So do uh, you have any other big storylines you kind of want to focus on going into this season that could potentially make a difference in the lineup here? Well, the the two of them, again, we talked a little bit about it, is, is you know, the offseason rest. Um, you know, the Lightning have played a lot of hockey in the past few years. In fact, no team has played more games since the start of the 2019-2020 uh, season than the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Vegas Golden Knights are the next one at 15 games behind one of theirs. They're a tired team. It's just a lot of hockey, and a lot of that was during COVID. Yeah, the season was shorter and different things, but it was a really – been kind of a really weird four years. And when you play that much hockey, um, you know, Stamkos and Kucherov and Hedman are, you know, in their, you know, thirties, which, you know, like, you know, to me, you know, that's young, but, you know, in, in hockey terms, you know, you're starting to get up there. So it'll be interesting to see if this, this rest that, that a lot of people think, you know, is, is going to be beneficial actually is. And the second part of that is, is the workload that Andre Vasilevsky is going to have. Mm -hmm. Cooper has already said he's probably going to play about 60 games this year. He thinks that he can do it, that he's done it in the past, that he's healthy, he's rested, he has a new workout regimen. Um, and I, I think they're so confident in him being able to do that, that, you know, in the, in the salary cap constraints, they went out and signed a um, – young man by the name of Jonas Johansson from uh, Colorado who has very little NHL experience. Um, the games that he did play with Colorado, he played pretty well. He, he did some really good things in the AHL, but uh, you know, they signed, you know, they got him for a very, you know, salary cap friendly price. And I think they're going to say, you know, we can pick the games he's going to play, give Andre a rest here and there, but you know, we're going to ride the big cat again and he's rested and healthy and, you know, we'll see if, you know, he responds. He also, you know, at the end of the year, he admitted he had a little bit of an injury too, which, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of slowed him down. So those will be a lot of things to see, you know, coming off, of, you know, the year are the, you know, well-rested lightning going to be able to, um, you know, kind of get back into gear where they were in previous years. Yeah. Still got a lot of talent up front. I mean, that, that, top six is still probably one of the best in the league. So, I mean, it's not like they're losing anything there. Um, yeah. Moving on to defense, not many changes here. I mean, you got Victor Hedman still leading the way, Cernak with Sergachev. Um, a few young guys did step up last season. Nick Purbex really came into his own, so he's going to probably have a bigger role this year. What do you see with this defense uh, going forward? Is it as good? Is it good enough to keep going? Or I mean, like I say, not many changes, so probably is. Yeah. No, that's the that's the the very stable part. They lost Ian Cole and brought in Calvin DeHaan. Uh, that's a good you know trade off. Uh, you know I don't think they lose anything there. It'll be um, interesting to see if the you know continued development of Nick Purvis, uh, Purbix and Darren Radish, mm -hmm. um, you know continue going forward. They they both came in and um, were surprisingly very good. It was good to see you know that talent come up from Syracuse. And, you know, step in when they had the opportunity. Um, you know, I, I can, you know, continue to see their development. They got better, you know, along throughout the season. So it's going to be a good, solid group. Um, I'm looking for Sergachev to step up a little bit more. Um, I think he's ready to take on it, you know. And then here's another guy, you know, Hedman, who, you know, he looked a little slow a lot last year. He had some mm -hmm. injuries, but he's also probably – played as much hockey because he's a defensive and if not more than anybody on the team, I think I was reading something he's played. Uh, he's in the top five in minutes played since the 2015, 2016 season. Um, and it, it's a lot of time. So, you know, there's another guy that can, you know, benefit from the rest of the off season. And, and uh, you know, I think if he picks it back up, the defense is going to be in really good shape. Yeah. Overall. I mean, this group is not old. I mean, Hedman's the, you know, the 
elder statesman, I guess. He's 32, and you got like 26, Cernak, 25, Sergeyev and Perkins yeah. are both 25. Um, you know, Hayden Fleury in there, 27, uh, Zach Bogosian, 33. So he's he's the oldest, but uh, yeah. you know, it, all these guys are still pretty well in their prime years. So it's a good defense. I mean, I, I don't think they yeah. lost anything there. Uh, so it's and Dehan's a good replacement for Ian Cole, yeah. I, I think. So overall, this defense looks pretty good still. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We talked about the goaltending there already. Uh, Vasilevs is going to take most of the starts. Uh, Johansson, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if they do give him more than, you know, I it, hopefully they do, because like we've talked many times about Vasilevsky's workload. And uh, if they can keep him healthy and rested for the playoffs, they're much better off. Right. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be, you know, just a matter of like looking at the schedule and saying, OK, we got some back to back nights. You know, you know, where where do we want each goaltender to play? Is there a stretch where maybe, you know, they, they have, you know, games every other day, you know, for five days, you know, do, where do we plug them in and stuff like that? You know, Cooper will have that all figured out. That that won't be a particularly big deal. But, uh, you know, if Johansson can play decently and, you know, at least give him the rest. And, you know, maybe even if he starts playing well, they can go, yeah, maybe we'll give him a few more games and, you know, give you know the big cat some extra nights off but and i think for right now they're gonna they're gonna ride him for 60 plus so we'll yeah see where that goes yeah well he's done it in the past so he's been able yeah. to do it but a lot of hockey's played <laughs> the last two seasons so all right let's look at this team as a whole in this division i mean this division's not gotten any easier no. uh it's it, it's there's that changing of the guard at the bottom. You got Buffalo Sabres kind of coming up from the, you know, a lot of young guys, a lot of excitement coming from there. You got the Ottawa Senators on the rise. You got uh, Montreal Canadiens probably still at the below there, but they're, they're growing. Where do they stack up in this division? Are they still in that top tier or they start becoming more in that middle ground there? No, I, I, I think they're still, you know, it, it, my first prediction looking at it is they're going to finish third again. You know, it's going to be, you know, Toronto. It's going to be probably Boston, Florida, and and the Lightning jostling it out for, you know, there. And, you know, again, all this in the season, the injuries, you know, we saw Florida, you know, finish fourth, but then, you know, make that great run through the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah. So, you know, it, it'll just see how to say it wouldn't be surprised me if if they kind of repeat where they did last year, if it goes Boston, Toronto you know, Tampa, Florida, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me. And if Florida jumps over Tampa, whatever, but you know, everybody's got to be looking behind Buffalo, as you mentioned, Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit yeah. um, could conceivably, you know, start making some noise there. So, you know, they're going to, you know, while it's, you know, uh, we're looking at the three that we usually, you know, fight for in the playoff spot, but you know, there's some people back there that are going to start uh, nipping on their heels. And Boston's, I think, going to take a huge step back this season without Bergeron and Krejci, too. So, yeah. uh, you know, we may see start that changing the guard a little bit uh, as we keep going here. Right. Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a fun division to watch, though. I mean, there's so many good teams and so much exci exciting players. Yeah, I think it's going to be very competitive. It wouldn't even surprise me if, you know, uh, you know, we get Tampa and Toronto both battling it out for first this year. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we know what a situation Toronto's in, you know, they got their, obviously their first, you know, playoff, you know, series win in a long time. Uh, you know, their, you know, their talent is still there. You know, Tampa's still there, Florida off the run, Boston. Yeah. Lost a key pieces, but they're still a good team. So. Still have Pasternak. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get to our quick fire round. All these fun questions here. Uh, let's start with our uh, one or two breakout stars for the Lightning this season. Well, I think the the, the, the two guys that we talked about, I, I'm I'm um, really thinking that Nick Perbix and Darren Radish are really going to step up and you know in, improve from their you know very impressive seasons last year. Um, you know, I think that you're going to look at. Again, we're just going to talk about a really solid group. They're going to, mm -hmm. I think, hopefully end up with, you know, four to five to six guys that, you know, 
they get comfortable that, okay, you can go play with Victor, this one, you can play with Sergachev, this one, and, you know, have that flexibility of, of, you know, the confidence is, you know, we can, we can put them wherever we want to. Because last year, a lot of times when they were coming up, Hedman, I think part of what Hedman did is, is when he, when he lost McDonough, I think he lost a little bit of confidence in the guy because he didn't know him. So yeah. here, you know, he played a lot with Perbix and there were other guys and you just look like, going, well, I can't do what I normally do because I'm not sure of what's across for me. I think this year he does because mm -hmm. he, you know, there are six guys that he's, you know, are very, you know, five or six guys very confident in playing with. And I think that's going to make comfortable. And I'm really looking forward to see what Perbix and Radish can do this year. Yeah, I'm excited to see Perbix for sure. He he really, like I said, came into his own last season and um, played really well with Hedman. So uh, full yeah. season with him looked pretty good. All right, someone needs to bounce back uh, this season that didn't have a good season last year. Um, that's going to be Nick Paul and Tanner Janot. Um, and we talked about them too. Um, you know, we we you know Nashville didn't see it when they traded him. Tampa didn't really see it when he got here. Um, we know from the, from his first season in Nashville that, you know, th there's a, a skill level that he can play at that he didn't play at for the last two seasons. Now I'm hoping like what happened with Hagel when Hagel came over from Chicago, that he had a tough time adjusting, you know, it, it, it's not easy for like young kids to come into a veteran laden, you know, locker room and just, you know, jump right in and get accl acclimated as, as much as they off make him feel welcome and stuff. It takes a while. So, you know, Janelle had last season, he's had the off season. They're going to come into training camp. You know, I would like to see him get, you know, closer to the levels that he did that first season in Nashville. And for Nick Paul, you know, we need to see some Nick Paul from, from the season before, yeah. um, you know, he was certainly a big contributor as a, you know, a third line guy, and, and did so much for him, especially in the playoffs, that, uh, you know, he, he's the one that's going to, you know, really need to have a bounce back season. Yeah, two key parts of that middle six, I guess we want to say. So, yeah, they definitely need to have better seasons than they did last last year. All right. Uh, an X factor this season. It doesn't have to be a player. It can be a situation. Uh, what do you got for the X factor? Well, the X factor is going to be to see whether or not they come back rested and healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody says they are, there's, you know, reports, uh, you know, they've been teasing a few things about Kucherov is really, you know, ratching up his, you know, off season conditioning program that, um, uh, he's very motivated in a very agitated sort of way. He, you know, everybody, he's a very competitive guy, um, you know, losing that series in the first round is still not sitting well with him. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, is the rest going to do them good? Are they going to come back, you know, healthy and, and everything like that, that that's going to be a really huge thing. And then the other thing is, are all these, how are all these new additions going to fit in? You know, if they have, you know, their top two lines are really good. And then the next two are eh, that, you know, that's not going to bode well. Yeah, that's a big thing. Uh, we're going to watch that for sure. And but that thing, that X factor is not going to be. Uh, we're not going to know until the end of the season if that if it works out or not. No, it's a work in progress too. I mean, you know, <laughs> you're you're going to see some moving around. You know, there's some extra pieces. You know, that could fit in there. Some younger guys that may be ready to step in. You know, we'll we'll see how this goes. Yeah. All right, let's turn to some rookies prospects. Now, there's not a lot of room for these guys to kind of come up, but. Uh, what what rookie or prospect could surprise and make the roster that no one's expecting? Well, yeah, anybody that would come up from Syracuse that would be a surprise because right now it looks like with bringing in all the veterans that you know this is you know they've got their lineup. But Alex Barry Boulay had a really good season down in Syracuse. I'm not sure there's too much more he can do at the AH, AHL level to impress anybody. He had an outstanding season. Um, he, you know, if, if any year for him to come in and, and crack a lineup and, you know, have some of these veteran guys that they sign get a few nights off, this would be the guy to do it. Um, you know, he, he's proven all he can at the AHL level. Now can he take it to the NHL level? Um, Gage Gonkels is another one that might 
you know, find find some time in there too. He had a very good season last year. So those are a couple of names to look for in training camp to see if they get the opportunity to, uh, you know, break into, you know, that lightning lineup and at least, you know, get, you know, share some time with some of these veterans. That might be the key to some of these guys that have a lot of mileage is to have a guy like in there taking some shifts and then rotating some, you know, um, nights off for some of those guys. Yeah, they almost lost him because he was in Baraboule, went to Seattle on waivers. Yeah. They were able to get him back. Uh, so. Yeah, that was a very weird situation. He's had a very long two years. He had that, the back and forth. He has a child now. So, you know, there's a lot going on. And, and, and it seems that a lot of this has actually helped him, you know, mature as a, a person is what we're hearing as well. So, you know, th there's that added piece that, you know, might you know help him propel to the next level. Yeah, be the next Ross Colton. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, a prospect overall that everyone should be watching in the system this season. Well, the the one of the top prospects or the top, depending on who the ranking, um, Isaiah Howard is um, has transferred. He played last year at Minnesota Duluth, and he transferred to Michigan State where he's reunited with his old uh, U.S. national team uh, development coach. And he said that last year he struggled because Minnesota Duluth wanted more of a grinding st uh, style. He wants to see it more open. So that's why he transferred to Michigan State and, you know, reuniting with his old coach. It'll be interesting to see if that gives him, you know, the, the kind of kick. You know, last year's season was kind of eh, um, you know, for him. So, uh, you know, it'll be curious to follow, you know, him and Michigan State along to see, you know, how that develops for him. Yeah, I like uh, I like him. He's a very skilled player. I, I, when I already got drafted by the Lightning, I'm like, uh, ah, they got another one. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be good in the future. All right. Uh, player or oh, who will lead the team in scoring on forwards and defense? And these are probably pretty easy on forwards, though. It could be could There's a few candidates, but on defense, probably. Pretty, pretty sure who it's going to be. <laughs> oh, you, you think I'm going to say Hedman? Yeah, I'm thinking I, so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could. I I would not be shocked to see Sergachev um, kind of do a little bit more to cut into that defensive league. It, next year might not be the year. Um, again, we'll have to see how Hedman bounces back too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, you have, you know, Stamkos and Kucherov, you know, take your pick. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, I, I think they just play off each other. And I, I, I think they both really don't care who leads in scoring because it means that probably, you know, they're, you know, somebody's paying, you know, way too much attention to the other one instead of, you know, and, you know, they'll just be happy to, you know, help each other out and do it. So, you know, those are, those are pretty sad. Again, the watch one is Sergachev. I want, I really yeah. want to see if Sergachev keeps developing with his offensive numbers and, and builds on what he did last year. Um, and, you know, that may not be a bad thing because he, he actually ended up um, spending uh, more time on the first power play unit than Hedman did last mm -hmm. year. So, and I think that was a little bit of balance too, to get some more leadership on that second level. But I, I think they're very confident in Sergachev's ability to uh, put numbers up from the blue line. And I'd like to, you know, we're going to see that maybe going forward. Some year that may flip where he gets ahead of Hedman. It may be next year. It may not. But at some point, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And up front, I mean, Braden Point could sneak in there as well. He had a really good season last year, too. <laughs> yeah, Braden Point sneaking in is always another one, a very underrated player. Yeah, and I, I mean, again, he could pop in there as well. Another one, if they're going like, oh, we're going to check on Stamkos and Kucherov, you know, Point will make him pay. So, Yeah. <laughs> All right, a player that could be traded before the deadline. Now, there could be a – I don't know. I, it's interesting with the Lightning what they do at the deadline. Um, it, it's tougher. Next year's the year after salary cap is looking a little bit better for them, so it may not be um, something. I – it. they have a lot of contracts. It, it, it's either, you know, high at the top or low at the yeah. bottom. I, I think if one of those, if, if like Barry Boulay develops 
and he can step in and they have confidence in him. Then you might see one of the, the newer guys that come in on a lower get traded off um, to get help somewhere else. Um, and again, you know, Sherry Brown, Archibald Glendening, if any of them play well, um, they could become expendable for, um, you know, even more cap relief. They may want to get draft capital back at some point. Yeah. Um, that would be the thing. And then, you know, if they're making a playoff run, is there somebody they can get? It's also a possibility. I don't see it because as much they paid for him. If Tanner Janot doesn't pan out, whether or not they move him, even though they've got a nice contract for him on, on in, you know, then they signed him as a restricted free agent. You know, that, that could be a possibility as well. Yeah, I'm sure that they're going to have patience with him because they did spend a lot of draft capital yeah, on him to get him. Yeah. So. But, yeah, you never know what will happen there. All right, last question, and this is a fun one. Uh, bold prediction or a hot take for this season? My bold prediction is I think I think there's a really good chance you're going to see the Lightning back in the Stanley Cup final at the, at the end of the 20th. Yeah. 23, 24 season. That may not be that hot. That may not be that bold, <laughs> but coming off the first round exit and everybody's kind of like, Oh, here comes the decline, you know, too. And then they made it. And now they lost in the first round and they're getting old and the salary cap and all of that stuff. There's some, you know, doom and gloom there. Don't write these guys off. Don't, no. don't write them off. It could, it could very well, you know, you could very well see them. And the other opposite hot take of this, they may not qualify for the playoffs. <laughs> I mean, that could be the, the, the real more hot take. I mean, you know, if things aren't going right, if they aren't rested. But I, I'm, I'm really going into training camp thinking this team has a very good shot at making the Stanley Cup final this year. Like I say, they definitely have the guns to do it still. I mean, the, a lot of these guys are – are big time producers in the NHL still. I don't see Stamco slowing down point Kutrov. These guys are still putting up tons of points. So yeah. Hey, I, I know you don't write the lightning off. You never do. <laughs> they just they just seem to find a way. So mm -hmm. all right, Jim, thanks for coming on the show and previewing the lightning. Um before we leave, uh give everyone your social media, find where you find your stuff. Well, I am on Twitter at baseboards double O seven and that's mostly where where you can find me on twitter and then of course you can you know follow my writings on the hockey writers where i do tampa and now a little more if you want to anybody out there is a chicago fan i just picked up the blackhawks so uh that'll be interesting this year there's some <laughs> real good kid there they they got some connor kids so <laughs> yeah that, that guy connor bedard i don't know who. yeah yeah, that, that's his name. That's his name. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Jim. Uh, make sure you're following all the lightning writers at thehockeywriters.com. We got preview posts coming out almost every day. Uh, lots of stuff coming out. Uh, make sure you're giving this video a like. Uh, throw those comments in the in the comment section below. All the quick fire questions you can answer yourself and uh, give us your comments. And uh, yeah, follow the YouTube channel or subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And um, we'll keep pushing out these these preview po preview videos until uh, we get through the whole NHL. So uh, keep it locked to the Hockey Writers, and we'll see you next time on another episode of the Hockey Writers Roundtable.